if we can talk show. Shall yeah. we joined by a trio? Shall Usually. We crack, shall we crack a can? I would ask you Let's what you're drinking. Get nice and close. You got it. Oh, that's it, boys. That is Ripping. it. <laughs> a good friend brings Ripping, a local yeah. beer. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Thank you very much. Yeah. Like bud. Yeah. Do you know what? Heavy. It's not as bad as I can as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll do the trick. Appreciate you. But what I wanted to ask you is, we were just talking about it before there, 13 years since I last seen you here. So much has happened in the band since then, but how does it feel to be back, not only in the UK, but in Glasgow specifically? It was amazing. I feel like we've, you know, a lot of times we come to the UK and don't get here. Yeah, for some reason or another, and it's nice to be back. Every show I think we've ever played in Glasgow has popped off. Yeah. So it's been awesome. energy's always good here, and uh, in general, we just as a band enjoy being in Scotland. So it's it's nice. It's an excuse for us to just you know go around town and check out the sites and yeah. just mm-hmm. kind of uh, exist here for a little bit. So it's your first time here as well with you as just the front man. Like yeah. it must be really hard because I feel like when the name of Trey was mentioned, people were so quick to like, oh, is that the band with the drummer? And they're like. Uh-huh. Like, oh, is, that, is that the Christian band? You're like, no, that's under oath. <laughs> oh, right, okay, it's that other band. Yeah, I don't know yeah, what you yeah. mean. And obviously, when you guys took your break, you and Heller Highwater, did that yeah. kind of prepare you for? Because being a front man is so much more than just singing. Did for that sure. prepare you for being like the front vocal point of such a band, well, a band like this? Most definitely. I think that that I'm a, a believer that all things happen for a reason. I'm one of those people. Like, I think everything that's happened in the course of this band, um, even going on a break and me starting a band where I did sing. I mean, I had four, three, four years longer in that band uh, to really like find out who I was as a front man and kind of navigate that. And got to tour with some really incredible bands too that I could like kind of watch. And yeah. the tour with Stone Sour and got to watch Corey Taylor up close. Wow. Tour with the Darkness, got to watch <laughs> Justin up close. And like really polar opposites, but all, a lot of times where it was like, oh, this is kind of cool to figure out who I was. So when it came time to, to do this, even the first time we did this in 2019, uh, we came for a tour of your different festivals and, yeah. and, I, and it was this exact lineup and not knowing that it was going to go down that way I was way more ready than I would have been you know of course so, but yeah it's been a lot of fun did that kind of translate to the album as well so obviously Baptized is your first time mm-hmm. again you oh you've always done vocals but then you've got the help out of Alex there yeah. what was that like kind of writing with the purpose in mind of you are you're the voice of this band it was cool because really we we really turned it into a thing where this band that really has five voices now and, and you know all five of us sing on the album, um, you know on Baptized the first song on Baptized is all five of us all singing right, a cappella wow. you know that that's yeah. all voices you know so um, it's one of those things where you know you said like the drummer that sings it's like Kyle our new drummer still sings right. live and <laughs> does harmonies and this and that so it's like uh, it kind of it kind of just expanded and turned into like a bigger beast yeah, yeah. it's allowed us to do a lot more and have a lot more um, tools within our band to create a bigger, more interesting picture with our music. Like, what's it like for you? Like, um, obviously, drumming and singing is really hard, but does it give you more space now that you know Kyle is only, well, yeah, does sing, but more focused on drums? Does that give you more space to kind of write maybe a bit crazier riffs? Um, Not like you didn't before. Yeah, (laughs) I mean, I mean, musically everything, we've kind of always done what we do you know there's not necessarily anything significantly different as far as like the way we approach things yeah um i mean vocally we've been able to take a more of an approach where everybody's a little bit more involved with the vocals you know having porter kind of step up front with his you know, aggressive screaming yeah, yeah. as well as even some singing uh you can hear him on drowning our newest single drowning he yeah. really comes forward a lot on that and um there's just a lot that in the past um we weren't able to do as much and now we're able to really um, just do a lot more vocally, which is really exciting. Yeah. Much more confident. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Drowning is the new single. I don't want to put you straight on the spot, but when I was watching the video for it in the description of the video, I don't know if you have clocked this, it, no. says, it says it's from an album that's called The Hope of a Spark. I don't Where know did that say it, anything? In the description of the Drowning video, it's like music, a Treyu produced, a Treyu album, The Hope of a Spark. Now, I was googling and couldn't find anything about the hope of a spark. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone on your YouTube team has done you dirty. <laughs> saying the name of the album. Someone's in the put false information. <laughs> There's definitely not an album called. No. That. Okay. Good I speak thing. the truth. I speak the truth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the drowning, it's so quintessentially a trio for me because it's quite the dark lyrics and obviously you guys have talked about depression anxiety mm-hmm. and stuff like that before but balanced off with a really fun at times light hearted video but obviously yeah. you've got the kind of darker tones 
and I always remember the first time I seen the music video for Lonely. Yeah. Like years ago, it's like again quite sad lyrics. But then you're walking down streets in Asia, yeah. grabbing couples. Yeah, and yeah. You and Travis are like dancing about yeah. the streets, <laughs> and like I feel like all these bands at that time had like, their own kind of element going. Like Bullet always had the kind of emo thing because they came out with like Funeral for a Friend. Mm and Trivium were the metal guys, but for me, Atreyu was always the fun band. Like, none of those other bands are right and blow. Yeah. Like, you always were fun. Is that something you guys still keep in your sound now? More so. Yeah, more so. Even with our video, I mean, if you see in the, in the video of um, Drowning, it's a very lighthearted, kind of fun, goofy yeah. video. And I think the one thing that, I, I guess you've noticed in one way or another over the years, that we, we have that element, but we've never really gotten a chance. Or no, I don't know, not even that we got a chance. We just never really thought about pushing that side of us forward because we are just goofy guys that joke around <laughs> constantly all day every yeah. single day and that's really a big part of our personality not just as individuals but as a band uh, so to have we were like on this you know um, set of you know music anything that we're releasing moving forward like let's, this era this era yeah. I guess yeah like, let's let's kind of lean into that a little bit more because that really is a better representation of who we actually are as opposed to making these like serious videos yeah I think it's so important to show like your authentic self when you make any sort of art absolutely um, I think like the moment you try and be something that you're not naturally mm -hmm. it it turns people away because you can just sniff it out so it's like for us it's like let's lean even harder to that and a song like Drowning, it's like, it'd be so redundant to make a dark, gloomy video yeah, of course. about depression. It's like, yeah, let's flip it on its head and be ridiculous. Have dance was, routines and pills and stuff. Yeah, exa <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Like, so let's just dance with some old ladies and <laughs> throw kids in pools. See, yeah. I think that's such an important thing to do because I just wanted to get your take on it, people who were in it at the time. I felt like in the kind of 2010s, the term metalcore kind of became somewhat of a dirty word like mm -hmm. oh they're metalcore like and kind of sniggered at a wee yeah. bit but the, the generation before me they always cite Linkin Park as like hybrid theory is the big moment where yeah. they got everyone into it but for my generation it was the poison it was the curse yeah. it was ascendancy what, what do you think happened in the time from like 2005 6 to 2012 where that just seemed to turn 180 and it was funny to laugh at these bands and put these bands down for the metal were. kids are all the numbers were there and again arena tours and stuff but I think it just, what kind of happened to that do you think I think everything comes like everything goes in waves and, and extremes become less extreme yeah. so you know you had you know back in the day the Beatles were like oh my god what is this devil music like yeah. you know Elvis, it's like, and, Elvis and, and all yeah. stuff where it's like in that era that was just the next step of aggressive music or heavy rock whatever whatever you want to call it yeah but it was it just and it got thrown into the mainstream with like video games and all these things where it became okay. Yeah. And like you had stores like Hot Topic in the states that were like surviving on our genre. Yeah. And selling our Striving bands on. like ours, T-shirts and all stuff. It became a real. It became a culture. Yeah. With in with emo and uh, kind of all that simultaneously became, like this counterculture became the mainstream, for a so, minute. And and you know bands like us were on MTV and. Yeah and in video games and on movie trailers and that didn't exist until now and it's funny like it's the the wave is still gone but it's swinging back again now yeah. 10 years later where it's becoming you know we were talking about this earlier in a VIP where like you know all these heavy band like heavy bands are getting bigger again the heavy music scene's getting bigger you even you have like hip hop artists that are making rock albums mm -hmm. and DJs that are working with metal and rock artists again too where it's like it's swinging back again yeah so and that's it's really exciting because I think this is for the first for my lifetime anyway this feels like the first kind of decade where we've not had that moment in the sun mm -hmm. like you guys were on Mr. and Mrs. Smith soundtracks yeah, yeah. writing songs for the Underworld movies yeah. but I feel like bands since then have not really had that opportunity as much no. like the amount of bands I got into from movies like I Miss Me Eye and mm -hmm. Midbane because they were in the Saw movies Yeah, but I can't think of a time like that recently where we've had that that all mainstream eyes are on us is at, we're, we're, we're always going to be a subculture but we've not had that moment in the sun for sure I, th I think it's like I said it's coming back it's, we feel so fortunate as a band to one like we've seen these these multiple seasons go by and mm. we're still here and still like in a relevant way yeah. where we feel lucky to be like to feel as confident and as excited about our band as we do now yeah. like to be on this wave now is like a whole new like ooh, 
Yeah, buckle up, guys. It's, yeah. it's like we get to catch the next wave, but now we know how to surf way better than we did <laughs> yeah. before 20 years ago. You know, yeah, you we can take those kind of past experiences and apply it to now, basically. Exactly, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so weird because people always kind of reference it, songs like Glow or mm -hmm. the kind of lighter songs. The first time I ever heard you guys was Someone Let Me Hear Bleeding Mascara. Okay. And I turned to him, honestly, one of the most immediate intros of a song you will ever hear. Mm -hmm. It is goal, literally, from the second it starts. Face punch. Yeah. Turn around, I turned around to my friend, I was like, oh my god, is this what death metal is? And he was like, I think so. <laughs> we just sat there <laughs> blasting with the mascara. And to me, that was like the heaviest thing I had ever heard at that time. I remember like, I put it on, it was the first time my dad was like, this has gone too far. We cannot <laughs> have you listening to this. <laughs> this has it. to stop now. Yeah. And, I was <laughs> and I've always kind of remembered that moment, and then when I started getting into it, I realised just how much of an influence you have and that was like almost 20 years ago yeah. but even now like for you example you're on the new Ice Nine Kills album who are a really big kind of buzz band just now yeah and from a guitar point as well I guess what's it like to see your influence on bands that are now hitting kind of heights in like 2023 it's strange I mean, it's, it's kind of surreal you know especially you know if you have you know a lot of the bands have gotten big that are in we're kind of in the second wave of metalcore or yeah. however you want to look at it you know like both my valentine asking alexandra like a lot of motionless and white like mm. you know chris motionless used to have live love burned eye tattooed across his chest wow, I didn't know that. Uh, padge and and uh has told me that a lot of his riffs are stuff that he just rips off from from stuff that i've written <laughs> and he's like scream and fire i took that's from bleeding mascara some of the stuff in there and he's like thanks and i'm like you're what? welcome <laughs> or uh, asking alexandria they said that that, that band started from danny warsop and sam uh beatley or whatever yeah um jamming atreyu songs together that's how they started the band you know mm -hmm. so it's it's wild to, to think of. it's it's hard to kind of wrap our heads around you know like yeah. how much of a wave has kind of spread just from us jamming in our garage and stuff and <laughs> I mean, I still remember us writing Bleeding Mascara in my dad's garage mm -hmm. and our old manager, Tim Smith, videotaping us just like going, oh my God, oh my God, this is sick, oh, yeah. this is crazy. And we're like, all right, I guess, you know. It's, it's funny, like on a, different, it. on a different scale, but it's like, I, I, it's like, I, it's like on that same level, it's almost like a Papa Roach thing. Really? They've been around for so long and Papa Roach has never not been relevant yeah, and they've always absolutely. just consistently put up records and gotten bigger and bigger and right now they're bigger than they've been in years yeah. and they're co-headlining on tour with a band like Fallen Universe who yeah. undoubtedly used to listen to Papa Roach when they were a teenager Absolutely. so it's like one of those things where it's like on a different scale but it's like it's like we're taking like again I referenced this new next wave mm -hmm. it's like we're still riding this wave with a lot of the people that were influenced by us but it's like we're right with them yeah. again yeah it's cool that must, it, must, it must be a really cool feeling it's, it's cool. not even just American bands like um, I work at a venue down the street mm -hmm. and I worked with uh, the guys in Bury Tomorrow yeah. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with but when I listened to a podcast that they were on and they said uh, they had to pick the five most influential albums and the curse was on it mm -hmm. and just to hear like a band like that like a trio always felt to me like oh they were my band and a band that <laughs> I really loved but a lot of my friends were, didn't really know them they didn't really know these as well yeah. and then Bury Tomorrow blew up and they started saying, everyone's like, oh, have you heard this band of tree? I'm like, don't even get me started. I've been banging this drum for years yeah, at yeah, this point. Yeah. It's mine. <laughs> yeah. It's my band, but that must be a cool feeling. Like, it's not just the American band, you're inspiring, like, you're inspiring bands all over the world with like, bands mm -hmm. here. Like, we've, Britain's got a weird kind of thing with metal where I feel like we always have really good bands that might not get their dues. Like, in Glasgow, we banged on about Bleed From Within for they were from within 10, 10 15 years right now. and now they are yeah. blowing up what six albums into their career yeah, yeah. Then they're on tour of August Burns Red just now yeah. it's like they used to play every Glasgow gig I ever went to yeah. they were the opening band for everyone and it's really cool to see that bands now that you're saying with this wave it does feel like a wave because these bands are getting their turn that I've been banging on about you guys have been taking on tours and stuff yeah for so long and I really hope this is just the bottom of the wave because like, look at bands like, like Spirit Box as well are like yeah. blowing the fuck up for sure. I truly yeah, I, th I think it's literally just starting to go yeah. I think the next five to ten years for this genre is going to be fucking exciting Big, for yeah. bands like us all these bands are going to be I mean even just when we were in the states um, we were doing a tour called the Trinity of Terror Tour yeah. and it was a triple headliner from Black Veil Brides Motionless and White and Ice Nine Kills wow. none of those bands alone have ever done arenas on their own they've yeah. done you know, maybe a couple thousand tickets 
that whole thing was in small arenas. I mean, there was they were probably averaging four or five thousand people a night, sometimes more. You know? Seven, eight thousand. Yeah, I mean, the biggest show was seventy seven hundred people. I mean, that's massive for like yeah. that type of music. That to be Absolutely. that heavy, to be that big again you know so it's like that's a real testament to like you can see where the industry is going absolutely mm-hmm. with drowning um obviously we're not saying it's attached to an album and it's definitely not got a name that's very potentially out there definitely not. is this <laughs> an indication of where you guys are going next because when that riff hit at the end i was like that's a tree like that to me that was a tree when your riff came in yeah. right at the end and the, the screaming starts coming in over it i was like this is it is that kind of an, an indicator of what people can expect next yeah and i think it's i mean if if you know a tray you and you followed us for a while mm-hmm. you know that every album every step every new era of the band is there's curveballs yeah we're always keeping people guessing and we kind of always strive to to do new things try new things so it's it's really an extension of that but i think without even trying it really is like there's moments where i've heard a lot of that with drowning and at, at first i didn't think that from my perspective of people like this is a fucking Atreyu song but I'm like oh shit yeah I guess it really is and I think that I mean there's a lot of that nothing we're ever going to do is going to sound so foreign because it's all got all our elements but it really is just an extension of what we've been doing just I think on a a higher level yeah yeah I think with with Baptize you know we were kind of finding ourselves with this lineup that we have now and trying Mm -hmm. to figure out like how, how to like approach everything in the best way put our best foot forward and like doing that and touring on that album we, I think we've really kind of found our groove to where anything that we've written moving forward you know especially starting with Drowning it just feels like okay we figured this out now and we know exactly what we're trying to do right now and we yeah. can really knock it out of the park mm-hmm. do you use it right on tour or are you one of those kind of bands that wait till you get home and then just solely focus on yes and no I mean we're always and I, I'm assuming a lot of musicians or most do this but like we're always coming up our brains are always ticking and thinking of stuff so like if an idea comes up, I mean, if you went through any of our phones, there is so many like <laughs> really embarrassing voice notes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just recording like, oh, I can remember this idea, and like when it comes to yeah, yeah, drum beats, whatever, do you think of mouth? I mean, it's all kinds of silly stuff, and um, sometimes even you're in the shower or something like that, you can hear the shower <laughs> running mine, in the background. Most stuff. of mine have shower. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty silly, but like when it comes time to write, we then take those ideas, hone them in a little bit more, and then we get into a room together, yeah. usually with our producer. Um, who's working with us at the time and then we kind of go like alright guys everyone bring out your ideas and like what do we want to work on today and every one of us brings material to the table so we have so many ideas to work with and they're all really good so it's like wow okay where do we even start here you know like we like we already have 20 songs to work on like which one do we want to start on first and we go around everyone plays something and then we vote on which one you know people are feeling in that moment and then we'll start on that and work on it and then it's like alright that we got that kind of rough idea down enough where like we can come back to that later that song's one. done essentially um let's do another one and you know it's a lot of times we'll knock out three complete songs in a day that's well that's yeah we're, we're machines when it comes to writing yeah. i mean <laughs> absolutely so is it, is it weird because i know you've produced stuff before mm-hmm. um i actually remember it was ungrateful by escape the fates first time i seen you yeah, yeah. A, a credit on an album yeah and you've been working with john feldman the last couple of albums yeah how much do you kind of self-produce or are you kind of looking to someone to be like all right guys enough is enough maybe 20 songs is a bit much let's start <laughs> that's not that's not doing three that songs a day that, that does happen to us yeah the john has done that to us before um <laughs> but i feel like we're it's weird because i feel like we, we look to a producer especially someone like john who is like his best asset with our band within our band is to tear down every preconceived wall or idea you have and just go with writing like and he's really good at getting that out of us I found when when like he's not in the room we just naturally have that like what are we supposed to do (laughs) how is it how is it supposed to sound he's good at like smashing that and being like do you like it it's like yes okay then let's write it let's do it Uh, and you know what I mean it's like so he's really good at that. He's really good at facilitating just like having great people in the room and like just, you know, it's, 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 he's really important with that. And his team, it really comes in clutch with the production. Yeah. Like his, his magic is not only in, in the songwriting and, and help there, but his magic is in the production. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot that we've learned from John, I mean, it be, since we started working with him in 2007 on Let's Sell's Paper Anchor, like it's mm-hmm. completely changed our whole perspective of how we look at songwriting and um, and, and how we build songs and how to make them sound huge because the one thing that we all have had, always had in common with every record we put out is like how can we make it sound even bigger than the last record how can we just make yeah. this sound so damn big like we just what does that take and 
he can accomplish that. So by us being able to um, take those elements, especially on the production side of things, Absolutely. there's so many little things that like a lot of people, when you listen to songs, you might not even almost like hear it as much as you feel it. Yeah. You know, elements and like pad vocals and things like that in the choruses to make it just sound fuller as opposed to just being like guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. It's like, let's add harmonies here and let's add pad vocals here or maybe a little layer of, you know, fuzz synth or, or synth yeah. or something yeah. like that. Like sometimes you can add intensity to a song on a heavy part by just adding like static underneath it. Right. And if you turn it up too loud, you just like, this is like an ear, ear sore. But if you turn it down to the right level and you blend it in, it adds this intensity to the song. Mm -hmm. Like little things like that that just we learned from him that it's kind of, it's changed how, how we do everything. That was been really cool because like he you see a lot of different things with producers like for me personally my favorite producer has always been Ross Robinson yeah yeah and I think a lot of stuff with him is it's almost pre-production like he's he's in your head Ross is yeah. his albums we met with Ross actually funny thing we met with Ross to do Lead Sales oh really and wow. it would have been a much different album that title yeah. track he, would have been I think pretty that, hard hitting if he was on it yeah <laughs> I think that we are a band that like we don't as a group, I don't think love the concept of just like diving into our deepest, darkest no. hole in ourselves <laughs> yeah. and living there and creating music from it. Like yeah. that's not us. No. Um, so like that's what he does. Like that's his special sauce. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he's, it's a, it's a, a physical beating sometimes. Yes. So I like, mean, we've seen. The yeah, thing. he'll yeah. grab people and push them across the room or do stuff like. He tries to get in your head about stuff, and it's like we don't we don't operate like that, and that's no. not we're not looking no. for that element. Yeah, especially this far into our career, we're like we know what works for us and what doesn't. And, I don't even know um, if this is true, but there's like a uh, some lore. I don't think the story's true. From Ross Robinson when he was doing the Glass Jaw record, and one of the songs was about Daryl Palumbo's like ex girlfriend that he like fucking loathed, like he hated her, I don't and he went to record vocals, it. whatever, and he had her come in and just stand there. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it's just, it's like, it's like f psychological abuse. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, bit much. for those type of bands that are, that, works. that want that, it works. Yeah. It's like, that's how you get it out. But. Yeah. Like, yeah. I actually know the song you're referring to, and there's a line in that song that's, I like your pretty face better blackened in my fist bleeding red. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could not imagine saying that looking to at the, the person. Woman. <laughs> How'd you get her there? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. She was like, yeah, sure, okay. It, John gets us there by like, you know, pulling his balls out and sticking them on a hot coffee <laughs> heater yeah. and singeing them to yeah. he's screaming. Do you know that? That was in Goldfinger, mate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. Obviously, I we were saying at the top, it's been 13 years since you last played Glasgow. What can the fans expect from you guys tonight? We've, I mean, obviously we have a shorter set, um, short, but we've kind of just packed in as much as we possibly can. Like, we've really tried to like cater, especially when we're, you know, supporting doing shorter sets, like slam in the heaters, you know what I mean? Like okay. give the people what kind of statistics show that they want. <laughs> and you know, we, we've been a band, it's very easy in our career to be like, these are people's favorite songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the numbers don't lie, but we're just trying to squeeze in as much as possible. But yeah. it's it's a fun set, and you know, we're hoping to come back uh, towards the end of the year for a oh, proper headline. And really, yeah, yeah, long overdue. But yeah. bring bring a lot of energy to the table. I mean, we're not a band that stands in our place and just kind of do as our parts. Like, I mean, we are. I mean, it's it's hard to keep an eye on anybody at one time. We're all running all over the place, and you know, Brandon goes out in the crowd sometimes, and like. Um, I mean, it just there's comedy bits in the middle of things of what we do. I mean, there's it's, it's fucking just, ridiculous. It's, 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 all, it's <laughs> we put on like we put on a show. Like we don't yeah. just go up there and like play the songs. Like we put on a, a, a show. We don't need lights or anything like that. We can just go up there and play and the rip songs. it. Yeah. So I mean, anything else is just icing. We actually cake. play in absolute dark. Yeah. It's, Turn all it's, lights off in the whole venue. It's like one of those. Restaurants. <laughs> you just gotta guess. Yeah. Are yeah. they there? You just gotta taste it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in the dark. Best of luck tonight, guys. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Appreciate yeah. it. I hope the rest of the tour goes well and the new album that doesn't exist that might exist. We'll it doesn't find, exist. The we'll new album does that, that new album does not exist. Yeah. <laughs> but, but cheers, thanks for the beer. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers. Cheers.